Welcome to, uh, to COGX this year. Um, I hate to say it, but we are literally drowning in information, uh, but starved for knowledge. And that's a quote from 1982 by John Nesbitt. Let's talk about digital for a second. People say it all the time. Everything is digital. But what does that really mean? It's obviously ones and zeros. It's actually three quintillion bytes of data that are created every single day, five billion searches. By 2020, there's going to be 1.7 megabytes of data produced every second for every person on Earth. And with this incredible growth, it's not surprising that 90% of the data in the world was produced in the last two years. There's obviously no cost to manufacture it. Copy, paste, share billions of times a day around the world across public and private networks, removing friction and ultimately creating new possibilities. But technology, especially digital technology, has changed every aspect of life today, from business to government, society, and to our planet. And obviously, it's going to continue to do so, people creating, sharing, and searching. And thanks to the cloud and entrepreneurial programs all over the world and an ever better funding ecosystem, there's been an explosion in the number of, of companies that have been formed. Over 10,000 companies have been started in the last three years, and that's just in AI as an area alone. That's a stunning pace of innovation. And they range from health companies to education to mobility. The choices are now bewildering. And how are we going to keep up? I could stand here and say that everything's going to be OK. It's just going to be fine. Um, but we're not sure, and neither are you. And that's why we get together. That's why it's so important to keep talking. We all agree that AI and new technologies will change everything. But we're also in violent agreement that no one knows what this world's going to look like. And so we have to keep coming together every year. And that's why we founded CognitionX. We wanted to provide a platform, a level playing field, where we can all convene and collaborate as a community to figure it out for society, for privacy, for social mobility, for the global economy, and for the planet that we all live on, for everything and then for everyone. We'll come back to the how do we do it better a little bit later, but right now, let's talk about what we need to do now and urgently. And we believe in running at the spike, which means addressing the challenges head on. No matter how daunting. And saying that, we still have an incredibly optimistic and positive view of the outcome that we're heading towards. It's just how we're wired. And it's because we believe that we can answer these age-defining questions. And if we can, we can make sure that the technologies are used ethically and responsibly, and we can fully realize the huge economic benefits of AI and emerging technologies in this era. That's why this year, in addition to a dedicated ethics stage, we have focused our energy on encouraging the community to think about how their tools, their tech, and their talent can be applied to these UN Sustainable Development Goals. Taking advantage of AI and emerging technologies will help us with almost everything we need to do to prosper together, to achieve new scientific breakthroughs, to address the climate crisis, to ensure the best health care for everyone, to ensure we educate and skill both our current and future generations, and to alleviate poverty and hunger and inequality and eradicate gender discrimination. And on top of all of that, make sure that we thrive economically whilst we do so. These global goals um, are agreed upon by 192 countries. These 17 global goals, everybody finds they have one or another that they are really focused on. And we're extremely proud to support 2030 Vision and Project Everyone. And we urge you to visit their booth downstairs and their ice cream van in the rain up at Tar Yard to learn more about it. And please, please get involved. As you will hear from Stuart in a minute, uh, who can talk with much greater authority than we can, the upside of getting AI right is measured in trillions of dollars of value to the economy and to society itself. <laughs> but we do have to get it right. And it's inevitable that some jobs will be lost, but new and different jobs will be created. 
What we do need to do with urgency is help the workforces and citizens of today and tomorrow learn the new skills that will enable them to take advantage of the technologies that have been developed, even prepare for a new definition of work itself. And as we address the education and skills challenge and opportunity, many believe there's a need for a new take on a universal basic income. That's a topic that's going to be discussed across many of the stages today, tomorrow, and on Wednesday. How will we ensure equality and prosperity as we transition to a new way of working and living? That's uh, a big one, and we don't pretend to have the answer. Um, but we believe, as I said before, that working together, working together is the only way we're going to work it out. And that, of course, includes government. We can't expect government to get this right on their own. And as some of you know, I'm the chair of the UK government's AI Council, and I'm thrilled to have 22 other members, as well as this whole community, working with us to help them get it right. And so we're thrilled to have, downstairs in the expo area, the Office for AI, Innovate UK, the Centre for Data Ethics, and many, many more government departments all here. They're asking questions of you, and they want to hear your feedback. I'm not going to read through this slide, but you must make sure you find them and talk to them about things like the call for evidence for the Center for Data Ethics and Innovation, how do we get, as Sadiq said, more women into this industry, and so on. These challenges are too big for one group alone. Please come and connect with them. We believe passionately that entrepreneurs and businesses must step in to help get governments on a sound footing and make sure that they don't miss the opportunity to take advantage of these technologies. And that's just one of the reasons why we're here. To, to convene people, be inclusive, and ultimately try and move the conversation forward. The festival started as a series of AI meetups. There were 20, 30, 300 of us. And then our first big COGX had 1,300 attendees. Last year, we had 6,500 attendees. And this year, Charlie? This year, we have 500 speakers, uh, over 12 stages, and 15,000 visitors. So thank you. And, and we couldn't be more honored to bring some of these world's experts from across industry, government, and academia together in order to provide some clarity, insights, and tangible advice on keeping up with this fast-paced world. Our business, economy, and society depends on it. So coming back to our opening point, we're drowning in information, but starved for knowledge. That statement's more relevant today than perhaps when it was written in 1982. But CognitionX is much more than COGX. And despite all of our digital advances, we're still struggling with the endless torrent of information. And we always planned from the beginning to build a platform that enabled us to bring together the community as well online all over the world and ultimately democratize access to expert advice. The challenges and opportunities we've talked about here can be met and realized if we had better access to knowledge and insight to help us make better decisions. But constant availability to the best and most specific advice is a challenge. It's not needed just once a year or twice a year, it's actually used all the time. And we've built a platform that can help address that challenge, the CognitionX Knowledge Network. This is your knowledge network. So starting with AI and technology as a focus, the public network is a free-to-use platform that enables anyone seeking knowledge to quite simply, using clever algorithms, get access to it. So the first thing is that they can ask a question, anything from strategy to technology, and add some tags to that. It's then going to match that question to the best experts in the world and then put you in a one-to-one -one conversation that's encrypted and safe and secure. There's no advertising on the platform. Users' data is controlled by the user alone. There are no conflicts of interest in terms of commissions um, as, a, as a marketplace. Um, and ultimately, people are free to develop commercial relationships on that platform should they wish to do so. And I hear you asking in your heads, but then how is it free? And the good news is it's funded by enterprise, the enterprise version, being used by a growing number of organizations. All businesses need to develop their own knowledge network, because every organization needs to improve their access to knowledge. In the 1990s, the CEO of HP uh, coined a famous saying, which is, if we only knew what we knew, 
would be three times more productive. And that's still said all over the world today, 20 plus years later. With this platform, we're enabling businesses both through their internal and external experts, capitalize on their existing expertise, simplify access to external expertise, gain access to advisors outside the company, uh, peer groups, and even former employees. So we invite you now to sign up to use the free platform. It's available as a link on your festival app, or you can just go to cognitionx.com. We don't mind if you don't listen to the next sentence while you do that. Um, but really, this is somewhere that you should be able to use throughout the festival. And for all of you with your business hats on, we'd love to help you um, uh, explore how you can improve access to knowledge in your organizations, organization. So please do come and see us um, at Expo booth number one just below us uh, where the stage is right now and learn more about the Knowledge Network and get, uh, get signed up and get access to the, the public network. It's quite um, amazing how <laughs> heavy the rain is getting. Um, I can just hear it getting louder and louder. But I do want to just reiterate, finally, how delighted and honored we are to have you here today. It's humbli humbling. Um, and, and really, to see this community grow every year is, um, is quite amazing. And I hope that afterwards, you get to keep talking talking to each other. Because over the next few days, I really believe that we can start to realize how united we are in, uh, in our efforts. So we have some tips. The first one is to enjoy the wonders of King's Cross. We're so grateful for Argent and the team at the King's Cross Estates for welcoming us to this beautiful home. We have 10 stages. Everyone is different. You should do like a bingo where you go to each stage and, and make sure you listen to something on each of the stages because it really is quite amazing what the team have been able to pull off. Um, with all this rain, just keep walking between things. And the restaurants, there's, uh, as, as Daniel have told you earlier, there's Curb for those who are brave and want to stand in the rain. And there are restaurants absolutely everywhere for those of you who want to sit and have a quiet lunch. And there are shuttles to the tile yard site. Um, so that you don't need to uh, walk there in the rain. Um, I would also ask that you try the platform. Log into cognitionx.com and ask a question, and you can join a community on there called CogX. And actually, if you look in your inbox right now, you'll have an invitation to it. That enables you to ask a question of anybody who's here at the festival, all 15,000 people. Um, and we think that's a, a great kickoff community to start on the platform. And most importantly, join in, talk to each other, Go to all the Meet the Speakers when you want to meet the speaker, share, learn, and of course have fun. <laughs>